What's going on guys? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to the next question, another chain rule example, another complex one, as you can see with this function, given it's pretty crazy. So if m of x is equal to f of 3x squared minus g of x plus h of x, h prime of 2 equals 3, h of 2 equals negative 3, g prime of negative 1 equals 8, g of negative 1 equals 5, f prime of 7 equals 4, and then f of 7 equals 6, we have to find m prime of 2. So first thing to notice, what are they asking for? They want you to find this. So they want you to find the value of the derivative of m of x of this function here. So we've got to take the derivative of this at an x value of 2. That's what they're asking. We've got to use all of this information here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find a general expression for the derivative of m of x. So I'm going to find an expression for m prime x. And then I'm going to plug in 2 for all of the x values in that expression. Now, as I did in previous videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this here. But whenever I have a g, an f, or an h, instead of writing f of x, g of x, or h of x, I'm just going to write the single letters. And actually, the only single letter we have to write is this uh, h of x. That's the only one we got to switch because f and g are already by themselves. So we'll have f of 3x squared minus g of x plus h, so instead of writing h of x, I'm just writing h, and that's all closed off like that. Now you don't have to do that, personally, like I said, I like to do that, just feel like I could see things a little bit more clear, and there's just less going on. There's already a lot going on, so anything that makes our lives easier, I'm all for it. So, um, first thing, before getting into this is that whenever I'm going to derive f, g, or h, remember those aren't the independent variables. x is the independent variable. So whenever you derive these, it's going to be f prime, g prime, h prime. Right? If you ran into an x, the derivative of that would be 1 because that's the independent variable that we're working with. But these aren't the independent variables. So it would be f prime, g prime, h prime, like that, whenever we derive those. Okay, so let's find the derivative of this. Let's get the expression. So what we do is we start with the outermost function, which is f of all of this. So the derivative of that is going to be f prime of all of that. So everything inside the bracket would stay the same. And then what we got to do is we got to multiply this by the derivative of the bracket. So if I just rewrite the bracket here, this is kind of like work on the side. What's the derivative of this going to be? Well, it's going to be 6x. The derivative of that is 6x. Minus, what's the derivative of g of x plus h? Well, notice that it's a function x plus h within another function, g. So the derivative of the outside function is g prime. That would be x plus h. The inside function stays the same. We take the derivative of the outside. And then we multiply this by the derivative of the inside function, this x plus h. The derivative of x is just 1. What's the derivative of h? It's h prime. Okay, so the derivative of this is going to end up equaling this. Now, one thing I want to mention is notice that the derivative of this bracket, x plus h, which is 1 plus h prime, this is only multiplied by this. Okay, there's no bracket, big bracket here. Okay, there's been times, I'm going to be honest, where I even caught myself making this bracket and then taking the derivative of this bracket and putting it on the outside. So it's almost like then we'd have to distribute. But notice that this, because we're subtracting here, has nothing to do with this 3x squared. These two are separate things. OK, 
Okay, there's separate functions. Let me erase that bracket. So it's like uh, you could kind of almost forget about that part. And if you're just deriving g of x plus h, you'd end up with that g prime of x plus h times 1 plus h prime. So you're only multiplying that 1 plus h prime by this expression here. And then the 6x is a separate thing on its own. Okay, so just be careful with that. So this is the derivative of that bracket, so that would go here. So we'd have 6x minus g prime of x plus h multiplied by 1 plus h prime. And then we'd close this big square bracket like that. Okay, so this here is the expression for m prime x. And now, what can we do? Well, we're finding m prime of 2, so we could just plug in 2 for all the x's. So we'll have f prime of 3, this would be 2 squared, minus g of the x is 2. Now, this h here, remember, that's just h of x. So this is going to end up being h of 2. Just be careful with your brackets here. And then we have to close off this big bracket. Let's actually put a square bracket. Like that. Okay, and then we'll have 6 times 2 minus g prime of 2 plus, remember this is h of x. Um, so that would be h of 2. We're plugging in 2 for all the x's. Like that. And then we have to multiply this by this. So it would be 1 plus, and then h prime, that's like h prime of x. Like that. So it would be 1 plus h prime of 2. We're plugging in 2 for all the x's. And then we got to close this big square bracket here. Right? So just be careful with all of your brackets. So I think I'm all good here. Yeah, it looks fine. Um, so then we'll have, let's simplify this. So we'll have f prime, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, minus g of 2 plus, what's h of 2? h of 2 is given as negative 3. So we'll end up having 2 plus negative 3, which is like 2 minus 3 here. Okay, so this bracket ends up being 2 minus 3, and then close the square bracket here. Um, this would be 12 minus g prime of 2 plus h of 2. What's h of 2? It's negative 3, so it's like 2 minus 3 inside that bracket. That's this bracket here. And then we've got to multiply this by 1 plus, what's h prime of 2? h prime of 2 is given as 3. So this bracket ends up being 1 plus 3. Close that bracket, close the square bracket. Okay, and then from here we'll have f prime, you just got to kind of do this in steps. We'll have g of negative 1, that bracket simplifies to negative 1. Let's leave that square bracket for now. Then we'll have 12 minus g prime of negative 1. Oh, no, no, no. See? You see that? I just made a mistake right there. I closed off this bracket, but I shouldn't have done that. I should have multiplied it by 4 and then closed it off like that, right? So even something small like that, that would have been a mistake because then if I close it off here, I'd be multiplying the 4 by this whole thing, right? But I'm only supposed to be multiplying the 4 by this, by the g prime negative 1. So there's no bracket here. So that's just an example of how subtle a mistake can be. Uh, and then from here, let's continue this up here. Erase all this craziness. So we'll be left with f prime 12 minus g negative 1 is 5. Right? So this is a big that. And then multiplied by 12 minus g prime of negative 1 is 8 times 4. Like that. So this is 8 this is 5. So then from here we'll have f prime of 7 
times 12 minus uh, 8 times 4 is 32. 12 minus 32 is negative 20. So f prime of 7, we're given that as 4 times negative 20. So the final answer ends up being negative 80. So that's the answer for m prime of 2. It is negative 80. Right, so lots going on there. You may have to review that uh, process one more time, but again, just be careful with the brackets, especially if you get something complex like this, because one slip up in the bracket can change your whole answer. So make sure you're practicing these types of questions a lot.